You've heard of the famous astrophysicist Ice Cube before, haven't you? You two know each other? No. No, not that guy. Today, we're diving deep under the ice in Antarctica to reveal the real NWA, neutrinos with anisotropy. Come along, way down under. Scientists recently looked for a new space-time structure using the largest chunk of ice ever made, the Antarctic ice sheet down at the South Pole, Antarctica. And this is what they found. Using the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory, which has been operating for almost 10 years at the South Pole, scientists probed the nature of space and time itself using ghost particles, the neutrinos. And scientists recently published a result one of the leaders of this experiment is Professor Francis Housen. We have an interview with him that you can find over here. That's a question I've never answered, which is rare. The nature of space-time has puzzled thinkers, philosophers, physicists, and astronomers for centuries. Going back to the early Greeks, who had the earliest notions of what space-time was, some people say space and time are emergent phenomena. That's not the subject today. Instead, today, we're looking at the properties of invariance, how things don't change, and they maintain symmetric properties, despite how you look at them and where you look at them from. Back in the late 1800s, Michelson and Morley, two scientists at Case Western Reserve University, my proud alma mater, did interferometric measurements using a so-called Michelson interferometer to see if the speed of light depended on how the Earth was moving with respect to the ether wind. More than 100 years later, astronomers are using interference patterns as well to look for the signatures not of ordinary motion in ordinary space-time under ordinary gravitational forces, but to look for quantum gravitational forces. And they're not using a physical interferometer like Michelson and Morley. They're using interference patterns of neutrinos themselves. Using Ice Cube, an experiment of a cubic kilometer of ice buried deep under the ice at the South Pole, scientists have peered into the structure of space-time, looking for new physics that could be written into the properties of the ghost particle known as the neutrino. The Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory has been operating for over a decade at the South Pole. It's made up of thousands of sensors, photosensors, that look for flashes of light. These are buried 2,500 meters below the Antarctic ice, about the length of 28 American football fields. Down there, down under, deep below the ice, they capture energetic neutrino signatures that originate in explosive events from the edge of time and space. That's what they had been doing until this survey brought to our attention the fact that they could actually probe the nature of reality itself. What is real? The Ice Cube collaboration, a team of more than 400 scientists, announced the quote, search for new space-time structure probing regions of the universe that were previously inaccessible by human technologies. What makes Ice Cube so unique, aside from the fact that it's the largest neutrino observatory on Earth, is that it's particularly sensitive to neutrinos coming from extreme distances beyond our galaxy. And these neutrinos come and deliver a wallop. They pack a very high punch associated with their extreme high energies. Let's take a step back. We've discussed neutrinos many times in this channel. What are they? Well, they're ghost particles for a reason. They don't interact other than by their gravitational forces, which is related to their mass, like anything that has mass. And neutrinos are known to have a mass, but we don't know exactly how much mass they have. And that's part of the goal of experiments like the Simons Observatory that I am running with my colleagues from around the world in Chile. Neutrinos come in three different flavors, the electron flavor, muon flavor, and tau flavor. They're so lightweight that till now, astronomers have never detected their masses. We have lower limits on their mass, we have upper limits on their mass, but we haven't detected the mass themselves. Because they only interact via gravity and the weak nuclear force, they don't interact with light, so they're a form of dark matter. They're able to effortlessly pass through stars and planets and people without slowing down or changing direction even though they're so abundant in the universe that over a hundred trillion of them are passing through you right now. So neutrinos are very, very devilish. They're very difficult to detect with conventional instrumentation. 
In fact, they're the only form of dark matter that scientists have ever detected. See a video about that here. Most of the neutrinos penetrating you right now are blasted out by the sun. But there's another class of high energy astrophysical neutrinos that come from cosmic accelerators located many billions of light years from Earth. These accelerators could be objects called blazars, which are active galactic nuclei that blast out jets of light, particles, and energy. But the exact source of astrophysical neutrinos is at present unknown. As these wispy poltergeist particles propagate from these distant astrophysical sources, they can oscillate or change from one flavor state to another due to quantum interference effects. Now, a particularly important property of these neutrinos is that they're very, very sensitive to the properties of the vacuum, the background space-time in which they're propagating. Any perturbations in the energy density of the vacuum can be used to hunt for the imprint of space-time substructure on the neutrino oscillations themselves. To conduct their search, the Ice Cube researchers use seven and a half years of their high energy starting events, which they call HESE -E events. These include some of the highest astrophysical energy neutrinos ever observed. What the Ice Cube team did is measure the relative abundance of the different flavors of neutrinos, their so-called neutrino flavor composition, at their Earth-bound detector. Because the two properties mentioned earlier, that neutrinos can travel the longest distances in the universe, the, largest, the longest distances traversed by any massive particle, of course, light can traverse the whole universe, and because they don't get really deflected, because they only interact weakly and via gravity, they're ideal sources to study the universe at its highest energies. That's a bingo. This actually probes inverse to the energy in terms of link scales. So the higher the energy, the smaller link scales one can probe. So you're probing things at great distances, allowing tiny effects to accrue to macroscopic values. Similar to what we discussed when we described cosmic birefringence in this video up here. Now here's the key insight. Scientists had long suspected that changes in the flavor of astrophysical neutrinos could open a window into regions of space-time that might defy what's known as Lorentz symmetry. Now, Lorentz symmetry is the important underlying bedrock of Einstein's special theory of relativity, itself the bedrock of all of modern physics, in that we believe that quantum mechanics obeys special relativity, and we believe that gravity, which follows general relativity, also subsumes within it special relativity. So having a window into Lorentz symmetry could look for cracks in the foundations of all of modern physics. Just a quick pause to ask you for a small favor while my thumb is occupied with old Albert on it, yours is presumably freed up to leave a thumbs up on this video. It really helps me a lot with your good old fashioned YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot, now back to the video. Lorentz symmetry I sometimes summarize as the fact that the universe doesn't care about you. I don't care! Doesn't care where you are, who you are, what you are, how fast you're moving, which way you're tilted or rotating, whatsoever. As long as two observers are traveling in what are called inertial frames, relatively speaking, moving at constant velocity with respect to each other, then they should observe the same types of properties. The universe at large scales, in other words, is basically isotropic and homogeneous. It means it looks the same, isotropy, and homogeneity means it effectively has the same properties if you translate your position to a different region of space. That's true on the largest scales, although there have been criticisms of the so-called cosmological principle that states that this is true throughout the entire universe. More on that in another video. Even though the universe appears highly anisotropic, when we look at the cosmic microwave background, uh, it's actually very, very tiny departures of order one part in 10 to the fourth or 10 to the fifth relative to the background temperature of the CMB is what we observe in terms of its anisotropy. Now, the planetary perspective we enjoy on Earth, we see effectively large scale departures from isotropy. And it's a good thing. We wouldn't be here if that wasn't true. Broaden your horizons beyond your local parochial distance scale and look out at cosmic distance scales. The cosmological principle holds remarkably true on those large scales. But if something was wrong in Lorentz symmetry, if there was so-called Lorentz invariance violation, that means non-respecting of the symmetry of boosts and rotations that I talked about earlier. Another, please. You might see the effects on gravity 
in the standard model of particle physics. Because they're so high energy, and because they come from so far away, they're undeflected, unmolested as they travel through the universe. These neutrinos are ideal candidates to probe the structure of quantum gravity. You need something that's massive, unlike the photon, to do this type of astroparticle test for Lorentz invariance asymmetries. We, along with my late great colleague, Dr. Andrew Friedman, studied Lorentz invariance violation using the polarization properties of distant active galactic nuclei as well. Neutrinos that pass through regions that have departures from local Lorentz invariance symmetry could potentially switch flavors in surprising new ways that would leave a record of the space-time anomalies that they've traversed along their paths to the Earth. These signatures could be imprinted on the neutrino flavor oscillations and scientists would read them out on Earth. But there are some challenges. Neutrinos switch flavors even without this space-time effect. And that has been known since the experiments that we've talked about, the so-called solar neutrino problem, that led to an understanding of neutrino oscillation. This oscillation can interfere constructively or destructively, and that was the focus of the research conducted by the IceCube team. Tape Katori, who's an assistant professor at the King's College of London and the, one of the lead authors on the analysis said that this comparison, what they did is make a simulation of what they would see in the standard model and then they extended it to incorporate potential departures from Lorentz invariance using a framework that's called SME, Standard Model Extensions, and that we've used before and many, many other colleagues have looked for before. And as I discussed, we will show more about that in a future video in the cosmic polarization of light frame of reference. The simulation that the IceCube team generated showed that the flavor model that was needed to include the effects of quantum gravity could result in interference of these flavors in the oscillation that they experience. The flavor ratio is one of the most powerful probes known to look for so-called new physics or departures from the standard model or extensions to the standard model, meaning that this could be used in the most powerful way to look for departures from Lorentz invariance, which again underpins all of special relativity, which underpins itself all of modern physics. And this is exactly what you want when you're looking for new things. You need a solid prediction of what to look for, which comes from your theoretical friends. You need an accurate and precise experimental observation, which comes from observers and precision of the powerful IceCube neutrino telescope. And those two combined together give scientists the ability to peer deep into the recesses of space-time looking for deviations produced by new physics. The measured neutrino flavors were then compared with those expected from the oscillation and interference of oscillation patterns during their voyage from the active galactic nuclei, the blazars, to the ice cube detector. Now is where we come to the sad denouement of the story. The researchers obtained a null result, but sometimes no news is good news because the ice cube scientists found no anomalies in the neutrino flavor conversion. That left the notion of Lorentz symmetry intact for now, but a powerful result. Just like the Michelson-Morley result was a null result. It didn't depress scientists. It made us rethink our underlying paradigm, eventually leading Einstein and others to conclude that the speed of light was constant in the case of Michelson-Morley. Now, the leaders of the ice cube experiment are perhaps a little bit more moderate in terms of the impact of their null result, but it's not necessarily disappointing, other than we like to detect things in physics rather than constrain things, but that's a personal bias that human beings have. The truth is the truth, and reporting it in the most accurate, reproducible way is what is the hallmark of good science. Despite not finding new physics, it's still an important finding. IceCube was able to unambiguously reach the parameter space of quantum gravity-motivated physics according to the researchers in the Nature Study. The results have blazed, uh, blazed a new trail into the theoretical domain of looking for quantum gravity with neutrinos. It's incredible when you think about it. The neutrino has only been around for about 90 years, and now physicists can use it to probe gravity, which itself has only had a classical general relativistic description for 105 years or so. IceCube has the highest sensitivity ever and they were also the first experiment to reach this new region where phase space could reveal Lorentz violating properties. 
And the good news is that these scientists are now looking deeper into the effects and how they would be manifest in the different parameters that describe how space-time could be defective. It's an unprecedented glimpse into the shadowy realms of the neutrino ghostly underworld that had remained out of reach until just now. Even as the initial experiment comes to a bittersweet end, there's a new beginning emerging, crystallized underneath the Antarctic ice shelf. The Ice Cube collaboration is looking deeper at the data again, using what's called machine learning techniques that we'll describe in future videos. And these could nail down anomalies that were missed in the initial study. The team is also dramatically expanding the size of the Ice Cube detector. So, today was a good day. Today was a good day. At least for astronomers trying to obtain a deeper insight into the traces of space time anomalies that may lead us to quantum gravity. The future looks bright for these astrophysical neutrino oscillations and their ability to probe quantum gravity, the universal space time structure, at the smallest regions. To learn more about ghostly neutrinos, check out this playlist that I made just for you.